Welcome to the Arts in Exile. We have poetry from Christine Penko. Welcome to the music of Laura Joy. And on with the show. Hi, my name's Christine Penko, and I'd like to introduce um, my reading this evening by giving you just a little history about the place where I grew up in the 1950s and 60s, um, that place being um, Arlita, California. And it wasn't actually a city or a town. Um, it was just a postal distinction that was created by a petition from the white residents living in the western portion of the community of Pacoima in the San Fernando Valley who wanted to separate themselves from the majority African American population then living in the eastern portion of Pacoima. The whites who wanted this division worked at the time side by side with African Americans in the factory and construction jobs then available in that area but their lives outside the factory rarely intersected. My poems this evening all take place in Arlita. The Lower Orders. What I remember clearly is the gutter running wild with muddy water and the rain pelting us as it still did in those long ago days in California and our small hands, Susie's and mine, shivering, plucking fat earthworms from the rampage to deposit in our mason jar of witch's brew, toothpaste, hand lotion, Listerine, and dead bodies of moths we'd gleefully beheaded on a sunny day, plucking them off the fire thorn, chasing them down on their final headless flight. We must have been five, giddy with the hunt. If I pinch my thumb and forefinger, I still feel their dusty wings, struggle of wriggling thorax. I don't know if anyone observed us or cared. Maybe it was the war, beheadings in the Pacific, bodies blown to bits in France, all of our fathers, their horror-filled heads, bloody hands, no room for pity of the lower orders. I wish I could say we were punished. I wish I could forget how we laughed. Racing the golden last sunshine My mama moved west in 69 From Chicago it was salvation Nursed all the wildflowers and babies on their reservation Now Phoenix, your embers are a masterpiece And Phoenix, I know rebirth won't come Without some grief Summer boiled and we'd flee north to the rains and the trees. Write our names in the muddy ash with our toes. Deep in the dirt of those sleepy volcanoes. Now, Phoenix, your embers are a masterpiece. And Phoenix, I know rebirth won't come without some grief. Good at praying and we got real good at tears She said when I'm gone, take my ashes north Oh honey, I love the sun, but my heart, my heart Is 
scorch Yeah, it's time to fly Gotta fly away Yeah, it's time to fly Gotta fly Look at me living in the place she fled Dreams of the desert in that cold Midwest Chicago I drove to you with all my heart We had our share of flames and our restarts Now Phoenix, your embers are a masterpiece And Chicago, I know rebirth won't come without some breeze This no next uh, poem takes its title from Fred Rogers' song, It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. When a child, I knew my small neighborhood, knew it deep. The, the Glocheskis, Schwarzlers, Lelishers, Matheny's, Sherlands, Erickson's, and Wickstrom's. My Uncle John and my Grandma, Malvina. I knew their children and the inside of their homes. I knew who bought a color television and whose cupboards were bare. I knew who left his Playboys on the coffee table. I knew my uncle gave his paycheck away in Vegas. I knew what kind of food they ate, mac and cheese or exotic avocado salad, fried pierogi, liver and onions. I heard their music, or the lack of it. The Sherlands record collection taught me every lyric of Lerner and Lowe, Rogers and Hammerstein. I knew their religions, Catholic, Lutheran, Mormon, and Jew. I knew which kids did well in school and who was the problem child. In the street, I knew who could swing a bat, kick a football, and played fair or didn't. I knew the alley and who set fires in the trash cans. I knew how hot the sidewalks got in summer and what the asphalt did to our skin when we fell off our bikes. I knew whose fathers fought in the war and whether they were Army or Navy. I knew whose mother was never without a broom in her hand and whose mother drank herself blotto on the sofa. As time passed, I knew secrets, terrible secrets. Who was cheating on their spouse? Who beat his crippled wife? Who molested his children? I would like not to remember these things. Most days, the mothers were depressed, the fathers angry, and the children, some of both. The neighborhood was choked with whiteness. Grown-ups said awful things about each other when they thought no one but a child could hear. They called anyone who was different horrible names. There were few books. Furniture was covered in thick, sticky plastic. Mothers locked their children out of the house in the heat of the afternoon, telling them to go somewhere else to play. Teenage girls got pregnant and neighbors gossiped with relish. Mr. Wickstrom, the Mormon, put the barrel of his gun into his mouth, pulled the trigger, blew out his teeth, yet somehow survived. I never liked him, but still, it was an awful thing to know.
This next poem is about my very best childhood friend who lived directly across the street from us. Uh, I met her when I was nine. Uh, she's gone now, and I, I wrote this for her. Her name was Nancy. At 11, you had breasts. Just because I've never written about the death of my closest childhood friend doesn't mean we weren't children. Playing jacks can be a blood sport. Ten-year-olds can have heated philosophical arguments about a pope's infallibility while slamming a plastic ball against a garage door. I was jealous you had breasts. Twelve-year-olds are capable of writing romance novels starring John, Paul, George, and Ringo. Your red polyester shaker knit sweater made it through junior high and high school. It was your only sweater. Some families run out of food before the end of the month, every month. You tasted the dog kibble before serving. We were both the eldest of four, our only power, choosing which ones to exclude. My father taught me to dance the polka. 
Your father brought you ceramic frogs from the thrift store. You hated frogs. A mother can be jealous of a daughter who receives used ceramic frogs. I think it angered you that I played the piano. You are always angry. A child can feel sorry for herself because her mother is a drunk. Your mother never drank. My father played the accordion and yelled so loud he could be heard over at your house. Your father was a typesetter with ink on his hands. He was always in his garage. It wasn't until we weren't children anymore that you mentioned, in passing, he'd molested you and your sister and brother. Only the youngest was spared. I remember thinking it explained the frogs. Sunbeams on the wall rise and fall Dancing the leaves now why do I feel so small My heart stored in my chest What a mess Building up walls and I do not want to fall Draw me out when I hide I like when you sit by my side Maybe that's all I need Someone like you to take the lead Please, please, please Teach me how to trust Always left in the dust I want to fall in love my feet I stumble around you yeah, watch how I miss the beat my heart sits in your palm like a bomb yeah it well, never fails I get tripped up in the details you draw me out when I hide I like when you sit by my side Maybe that's all I need Someone like you to take the lead Please, please, please Teach me how to trust I'm always left in the dust I wanna fall in love oh, oh, Now love keeps I'll get it I'm so close Breaking habits like dishes on the wall and I'm Standing ten feet tall Please, please, please Teach me how to trust Dust. I wanna fall in love oh, now. Love keeps knocking on my door. Y'all yeah. are looking for. Don't wanna open the door. No, 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 no. Please, please, please teach me how to. 
trust I'm always left in the dust I want to fall in love oh, 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 now Love keeps knocking on my door Yeah, all I'm looking for Don't want to open the door, no Don't want to open the door And my last poem is something written after Joy Harjo, who many of you know was uh, not too long ago our National Poet Laureate. And this is after her poem, American Sunrise. It's called Three Generations. One, carried on the wave of migration following World War II, we found ourselves unmoored from Ohio, adrift in LA. We labored at Lockheed, went to church on Sunday. Our children never went hungry. We kept as our secret what happened on that destroyer in the Pacific. We believed sunrise had finally arrived in our America. Two, we were sent to war in Vietnam or went to college or left in protest. Our families exploded like scattershot. Some imagined their success meant the country was headed toward justice for all and marched toward the mirage of sunrise in America. Three, our families never reunite. Everyone works. We are raised by strangers. The rich get richer. Nothing trickles down. For some, the streets are their mattress. We stare at one another across a deep crevasse, many with guns loaded. The earth is on fire. We look to our leaders, speak to our elders, try to believe in a God who wouldn't allow the worst that could happen here today in America. I hope you've enjoyed The Arts in Exile. I hope to see you next time. Sun goes down. Ocean is black. Just a few hours till the light comes back. Traveling time. Hope in our hearts. Wondering the sky, the stars make art with constellations. Yeah. Constellations on Who's out there in the ancient glow? Yeah, messages from a thousand years ago. Did they see Jesus, see the fall of Rome? Take photos of dinosaurs, light years from home. No constellations, yeah. Constellations, oh. The Mayans looked up and sought the truth. Galileo, he wanted proof. Cosmic dancers in our home backyards are looking for answers for your children. We're children of the stars, we're children of the stars, yeah. Secrets a blessing and a curse 
Try and find our place in the whole universe Spending our time, hope in our hearts Scanning the sky, yeah, playing our part In the constellations, yeah Constellations of oh, the Mayans look dark and sought the truth Galileo, he wanted to prove Cosmic dancers in our home backyards Looking for answers, we are children We're children of the star We're children of the stars, yeah. Children of the stars, yeah, we're children of the stars, children of the stars, yeah, we're children of the stars, yeah. I saw a shooting star just before the dawn, I swear it was there, but I looked back and it was gone.